if I was going to choose like the, you know, ex, the, my expected demise for the human race is apathy. It's getting everything that we want, getting too comfortable and mm -hmm. just not expanding anymore. And, you know, and sort of gradually dying out, you know, but there are plenty of other candidates. Uh, there's, in fact, there's an almost uncountable list of them. There, a lot of books have been written on the Fermi paradox and they're, a, you know, it's a rogues gallery of all the different things that can undo us. And AI is on that list in many different places. And there, there are plausible concerns about AI and the effects that it could, I mean, they're plausible concerns. There are lots of ways AI could go wrong, but then almost everything like nuclear weapons could have gone horribly wrong and somehow we survived that. Um, biotechnology in principle could go really, really badly. And, you know, it hasn't so far. What do you think about uh, society facing a crisis when abundance removes the purpose for large numbers of people not needing to work? Yeah, I, that's a concern for me too. Mm -hmm. There, there's kind of two tracks that I've been thinking about this. So one of them is, yeah, it's a it's a really big problem because like it'll be so disruptive to society to remove the carrot of, you know, economic, um, the economic incentive to like be useful to society and that kind of stuff. And th there's all kinds of levels levels after that that are a problem, like including apathy. Another another thing that occurred to me is like in first world societies, we've had excess productivity for a really, really long time. Like depending on where you draw the line, you, you can go all the way back to the original Luddites and the first, you know, when we first had the, the the loom and we could make cloth and it was inexpensive to do that kind of stuff. That was back in the day when, you know, you'd save up and you'd have, you know, the average person would have one change of clothes, maybe two if you were really rich. And now, you know, kids in Africa have a closet full of T-shirts because we can manufacture. So the, you know, the economic, the cost of producing material like fabric for making clothing and whatnot went from really, really high to, you know, it's free. It's, it, you know, it uh, and yet somehow we managed to consume all of that and that, and it didn't completely undermine our society. And the same thing with like food production, you know, there was, you know, it used to be, it what was a hundred years ago or 150 years ago, 98% of people in first world countries were farmers. Right. And now the farming jobs are all gone. And we found other things for those, for those people to do. We found ways to incent, incent them to be productive members of society and good parents and good citizens. And, and uh, so somehow, you know, we, we, I mean, we're going to keep seeing these levels of abundance pop up. And I, I take some solace from the fact that it's happened before right. and, and we've adapted to it. Now, do we get to a point where like nobody ever has to do anything at all in order to be materially comfortable? Is that some kind of bridge too far where uh, people like maybe, I don't know. The thing is humans want a lot of stuff besides material they care about you know, they care about friendship and they care about, uh, you know, the, the, you know, they have loved ones and they, you know, they have ideals that they'd like to see realized. They have hopes for the future and that kind of stuff. And so there's, there are these other levers of incentive that we could give to a population to try to keep society functioning, even after material abundance takes away that as a carrot or stick. Mm -hmm.